Welcome to the big match revisited, a chance to look back at the way football was televised more than four decades ago. This edition was shown over the busy Easter period in 1975, when some teams were asked to play three games in four days, a punishing schedule on some unforgiving pitches. Settle down for some football nostalgia with host Brian Moore. I welcome again to the big match. I suppose when people look back on a remarkable season, they'll assess as two of the craziest results, the double by struggling Carlisle over Everton. And yesterday, Carlisle really trampled over the league leaders and indeed knocked them off top place. And we'll be showing you today just how they did it. Also today, Ipswich against Leicester City, and our main match is between Arsenal and Stoke City, a game that reflects top and bottom of the table. Our studio guest today is a welcome to Charlie George, who really, I suppose, has become almost a forgotten man at Highbury, and he'll be talking to us about his future. We'll stick with Arsenal uh, and a five-goal performance in our big match playback, plus your letters as well. But first we go across to Highbury on one of those weird meteorological days when we've had snow, rain and sunshine for the game between Arsenal and Stoke. Arsenal coming out knowing that it's a vital chance for them now to get away from the relegation area. And Stoke City for their part, coming from their drawn game at Upton Park 24 hours earlier, now third in the first division table and with a real chance now of grabbing the championship. But our first job today, as usual, is to catch up on the two teams for a game that is bound to be slogged out on a very heavy pitch indeed. Arsenal without Terry Mancini in their defence, he's injured. John Radford's got a cold. Brian Kidd, he's out of the attack through suspension. 18-year-old Irishman from Dublin, Frank Stapleton, gets his first game. And Eddie Kelly returns for the first time to the side since January. As for Stoke, they field exactly the side that got that 2-2 draw at West Ham on Good Friday. So, as we look at the sides there, we see Frank Stapleton, a good goal-scoring record in the reserves and quite a day for him. Quite a goal-scoring burst, 2-5 in the last two games from another Irishman, Terry Conroy. I can't understand it. You know, I'm not, I haven't been a prolific goal-scorer in the past, but it just seems to be getting into positions in the last two games of, you know, I could have even scored more, but um, I'm very pleased and just hope it continues. Well, we know we want two points, so at least we'll go out and attack them. And uh, Arsenal are quite a good attacking side as well, so it promises to be a good game. Referee Alfred Gray of Great Yarmouth, the crowd 26,000. So Stoke City kick off, attacking the goal to our left in a rather dazzling outfit of uh, yellow shirts with uh, a blue band on them, diagonal band, light blue shorts and light blue socks. Arsenal in the red shirts with white shorts. Results of the last few days really have uh, opened up the interest in this particular game. Stoke with their draw at West Ham yesterday, putting themselves into third position and in with a chance. Arsenal losing at Luton and are now on the fringes of relegation again. So important for Arsenal then that they pick up one or two good results in the next few days to ease all their worries. Here's goalkeeper Jimmy Rimmer and there's uh, the youngster Frank Stapleton. A throw to Stoke. Simpson, Hudson, Hurst getting in just first, just a minute push in the back of Hurst by Matthews, and a free kick to Stoke. Noticeable how much Alan Hudson directs operations in the middle of the field, shouting all the time. Seem to experience players like Jeff Hurst as to exactly where he wants them, I don't think that's a particularly good one, although in the end... Rimmer finally had to whack that one away with his fist. Hudson curling that one in there, and uh, Rimmer in the end, under a fair bit of pressure, just to palm that one away. So a corner for Stoke, which Terry Conroy is going to take. Dangerous looking corner, and that time a good safe catch by Rimmer. Pushed in the back as he jumped. Played again for Mahoney. A little toe poke through there, and in the end, Rimmer had to go down well. Well, if anybody was going to test the goalkeeper, it was going to be John Mahoney, who was playing so well this afternoon. Finally got it onto his left foot, and the shot with Rimmer saving, uh, saving at full length. 
Al Hudson. Broken the crowd up a bit. Quarter of an hour to go to half time now. Simpson forward for Arsenal. Into the breeze. Stapleton leaving it there for Story. Played on for McNabb. The first real overlap that Bob McNabb has made, and he's got a corner out of it off Alan Dodd. So Arsenal's corner. And taken quickly, here's Alan Ball now. Faced by Skeels, but still getting it over. Hornsby couldn't get the hitter in. Kelly tried and tried again, and still he wouldn't come through for Arsenal. Kelly had two great cracks at that one, and both were blocked. Finally went through quite easily for Shilton. Rice with the header. Now Mahoney. Conroy. A back heel that goes straight to Peter Storey. Ball for Storey. Hit again towards Hornsby. Rostron. Brought down by Bloor, free kick. Now it's with Alan Ball. Rice away on the right. Ball looking that way, then deciding uh, that Kelly will be the man. Rice again making a run, but I think it's a little too late for Kelly to be able to do anything about it. Ball again. Flick through for Rice. Beaten away by Hurst. Conroy. Straight at Matthews. Now Hudson. McNabb there before Conroy. But still Stoke get possession with Hudson. Into the little bit of space there for Mahoney to run onto his story, tackling for all he's worth. Both Conroy and Hurst, and Hurst a little upset. With that challenge by Story, so too was the referee because he's given Stoke a free kick. Now I wonder what they're going to come up with. Salmons and Hudson behind it, and in that sort of mud, I think it'll probably be a, a little touch off by Hudson for Salmons to have a crack at goal. Lifted it in back, Salmon still having a go at it. Oh, and it's there! Jeff Salmon's has scored. Well, out of the blue, that one. Thought Hudson might touch it short, but in fact he lifted it. And although it wasn't really as accurate quite as Salmon's wanted it, he drilled that through the wall or past the wall and beyond Rimmer. 1-0 to Stoke City. Their defeat in midweek at Luton put them on the fringes of relegation worries again. A defeat here today will only add to them. And at the same time, of course, if Stoke can take away two points from Highbury to the, from the uh, also adding to the one they got at West Ham yesterday, then they really are right in the championship hunt again. Played back firmly to Shilton by Ian Bowers. Salmons looking for Hurst. Mahoney, who's been the real star for Stoke City in this first half. Along with Hudson in the middle of the field. And again, I think Story's going to be booked for this. The challenge just a little too violent on John Mahoney. And the referee had had one or two uh, quiet cautionary words with the Arsenal number four before. And so Alfred Gray, the referee from uh, Great Yarmouth, takes the name of Peter Story, and I think Story's face told you that he didn't agree with it. But certainly he had been warned before, right on half-time, as Hudson now takes that free kick. And a push there on the Arsenal player as Dodd rose for it. And the referee looking at his watch. As the whistle goes for half-time, rather poor one for Arsenal.
their inexperience showing up, certainly in front. Stoke dominating this first half, and the goal from the free kick by Jeff Sammons is the one that separates the two sides, but no doubt whatsoever that Stoke City challenging now for the First Division Championship well deserved that one goal lead. A lot more to come on the big match this afternoon, but we leave you then with the half-time score here at Highbury. Arsenal nil, Stoke City one. We'll be right back with the second half. So welcome back to Highbury as Arsenal kick off now, attacking the goal to our right. Recent home run has not been a good one. They've won only one of their last six at home, and now they've got quite a task on their hands to defeat a very confident-looking Stoke City side. That means, above all, beating arguably the uh, best goalkeeper in the country, although Ray Clements holds the number one spot at the moment, Peter Shilton. But Arsenal have won themselves this corner in the opening seconds then. Stoke have a good run in London. They've had two wins and three draws in the capital this season. But here's Alan Ball then with the corner for Stoke. And he hit Terry Conroy on the head. And Conroy brings it away. Yes, I think little uh, passes like that that Greenloff attempted there will be very difficult to uh, make work in this very, very high, uh, heavy conditions here. The best thing that could probably happen would be a sharp shower of rain to liven the whole pitch up and get the ball moving. Free kick to Arsenal. Rostron now played again for McNabb, hit in first time there, nodded away by Hudson. And now by Bloor to Greenoff. Conroy versus Rice and Conroy now. And away he goes, Rimmer's got to come out now. Can Conroy keep his head and beat Rimmer? He's trying to go round the Arsenal goalkeeper, he's taken it too far, and in the end, it was pushed behind, though the ball had gone behind. That was a great run by Conroy, kept his head superbly, in fact, and then played it just a little too wide, past Jimmy Rimmer, and made the angle just a little too difficult for himself. Really could have been the death blow, that, for Arsenal in this game. Stoke in another one, it's very difficult to see how Arsenal will get three. That fell nicely for Stapleton again, trying to put that into the path of Rostron and uh, Shelton there in the nick of time. The Arsenal youngsters combining well there, really for the first time in the match, a nice little touch forward there. And Shilton out just in time. McNabb won that in the air. Well, now Hurst onside. Still might run for him. Rimmer out quickly. Salmon's trying to make something of it. And still the ball. Yes, it's finally gone out of play for a corner for Stoke. Break there by Hurst and uh, Rimmer, I think, was half uh, hurt there. Mahoney with a shot and a goal kick for us. Stoke still looking the sort of side that might come up with the surprises. Arsenal at the moment fairly obvious in most things that they're doing. sides very badly hit by injuries here today Arsenal lacking kid in attack and Mancini in defense his ball plays it through there tries to find stable and it finds Hornsby instead and Stoke with uh, no less than four players at the moment recovering from broken legs Hornsby again trying to find his way through Kelly and ball can they engineer something Eddie Kelly trying a shot but it's blocked when it might have been promising there for Arsenal and green off now Trying to get Salmons on his way. Hudson. Played here for Bowers. Young Stoke boy, only 19. Hudson. Greenoff. It's 
a free kick. And Hudson's taking it, spotting that Hurst was free, but unfortunately for Stoke, he was free because he was offside. position for Arsenal, supporting here now by Stapleton. Oh, the youngster did well there. Kelly. Don't think McNabb's got a chance, no. But Arsenal get a throw. Kelly. Simpson back for Kelly again. I think that came off the referee. But Arsenal get it again, only to give it once more to Hudson. Arsenal throw. Now Hurst. Green off. Mahoney. Ball battling and winning. finding Hornsby, Arsenal with four up now, still with Hornsby, this could be dangerous for Stoke, Hornsby trying to turn it in, Shilton there though, very promising four against four situation there for Arsenal. versus Dodd, ball in support and taking charge what a good ball there from Alan Ball to Pat Rice and he's hit it wide superb piece of thinking there by Alan Ball taking charge of that situation on the touchline and sneaking that ball into Pat Rice sensing that Rice was coming up and Rice couldn't quite find the shot to match the pass Shaking off Matthews and trying to get Conroy on his way and Rice now back in defence. Ball still in play, said the linesman. Kelly. Oh, he done it too long there and found himself beaten. And here's Conroy now. Four Stokes, still Conroy. And it was uh, Rimmer who had to come out and do the defender's job and put it behind for the corner. So a corner to Stoke. Certainly Arsenal have been pressurising Stoke more in the second half, but it's Stoke who've been making these half chances, and there's Samuels putting it over, and Green off there with a shot, and now Mahoney hitting one, oh, and somehow McNabb got in the way of that, and finally, Bars put in a good 30 feet over the crossbar. Great clunk there by Mahoney that hit McNabb full in the forehead. And Arsenal want to bring on Liam Brady. And Frank Stableton, the youngster playing his first game, is the one who's going off. Getting applause from all around Highbury, the youngster. 
So one boy from uh, Ireland goes off, and Liam Brady, another from Ireland, comes on. The shirt pulling going on there. They're all a bit frantic there as Arsenal begin to hustle Stoke and force Bowers to turn it back. Mahoney. Green off beaten by Kelly. Now Matthews again. Dodd with the header away, but only as far as McNabb. Pushing the back on uh, Hornsby by Dodd. A free kick to Arsenal. With a quarter of an hour to go then, Arsenal still this goal behind. But getting much more of the game now as McNabb turns it in towards Ball and Hornsby. Rice, a chip forward now for Rostron, took up a good position there, Rostron, and Kelly couldn't quite get the touch to it as Stoke didn't know where it was, and finally it goes behind again for another corner to Arsenal. And again, Alan Ball's going to take it, and again he plays it a little bit on the short side, and again Rice goes in there but couldn't quite make anything of it. Matthews now, will he get a chance of a shot? A chip instead, Rice looking for something there, nothing given, as Rice tumbles over. In fact, Rice was doing the pushing himself, said the referee. Shildon having a word with the linesman to get his flag up earlier. Skeels belting it away to give his defence a few moments of breathing space. But Arsenal got the taste for it a bit at the moment, coming forward. Brady. Played for Matthews. Rice making himself available. Rostron stayed out here on this right touchline. Here he is. Ball. We tried to get in there, but was forced out of it by Dodd. And a throw to Stoke. Ian Bowers, young Stoke lad, 19. Jeff Sammons. having no nonsense there from Conroy Kelly keeping it in well Rostron taken out of it by Blower free kick again to Arsenal got ten minutes left now Kelly to ball Kelly again floated deeper there for Story who stayed right in there McNabb is up there too hit for Story again just over are all adding their power and experience to the attacks. And as that one came floating over there, McNabb played it on for Storey. And Storey shot just too high. Well, eventually they can get the ball out of the moat. And Shilton has had much more to do in this second half. But still hasn't been beaten as Stoke lead by a goal to nil. Hudson to Conroy. Conroy's taken one or two knocks in this game, and I think he's uh, feeling him a bit now. And of course, Stoke have another game on Monday against uh, Liverpool, which should be uh, so crucial. Particularly if Stoke can get away from here with two points. But Arsenal coming at them again now, with McNabb again taking up an attacking position on that touchline. Now it'll come for Brady. There's a shot by Brady, and oh my goodness! And it's still not away yet! Can Kelly do it? Yes, Kelly! Well, it's the equaliser Arsenal deserved. 
McNabb played a big part in it down that left touch line. And the ball bubbled around there for quite a while until it came through to Eddie Kelly. Right foot, bang, no mistake. Kelly scores his first game since the 18th of January. And he makes it 1-1. Now, Arsenal, with the pendulum really swinging their way as it has over the last 20 minutes or so, can they, in the last seven minutes or so, get the goal that would bring a victory? Salmon's going in now for Stoke. Oh, he hit it well! What a good save now! Can Greenoff turn it back? Yes, he can, and another good save by Rimmer. Tremendous save there by Rimmer from Salmon's. And for a moment, it looked as though Greenoff might get in on it. And Rimmer was equal to that one as well. Well, Dodd has a second go. Two minute, uh, a minute to go now. And the ball comes to Alan Ball. Through now to Liam Brady. Ball kick. All a little uh, upset, as you could just see there a moment ago. But he was in a fair bit of space on the right-hand side of the field, and uh, Brady, the number 12, didn't quite spot him. Rice to ball. Flicked on again for Brady. And Bloor was in there for Stoke. Back here by Brady. Bowers getting Stoke out of a spot. Salmon's helping out. Conroy there as well. Good play again by Stoke. Particularly by Conroy as the final whistle goes. And Arsenal with that goal right at the end there by Eddie Kelly, getting themselves a point and saving themselves a lot of anxiety at the foot of the table. Probably just about the right result in the end after Jeff Sammons had put Arsenal, uh, put uh, Stoke into the lead from that free kick in the first half. Eddie Kelly, after Arsenal had put a lot of pressure on Stoke in the second half, getting that equaliser, so that in the end we probably came up with the right result in the mud at Highbury today. A final scoreline then, Arsenal 1, Stoke City 1. Well, a point one for Arsenal there against stylish Stoke City. And the news is that Terry Mancini will have recovered from injury for tomorrow's home game against Sheffield United. And, of course, Brian Kidd returns after suspension. But now let's welcome, for the first time on the big match, Charlie George. Charlie, you won't be playing tomorrow, will you? In fact, it's been a, a really miserable season for you. Before we talk about you, though, let's talk about the Arsenal performance yesterday that you sat and watched. What did you think of them yesterday? Well, on the old the side they had out and the young boys in the side, you know, they got a, a good point, really. You know, the play, uh, suspensions and injuries and one thing and another, they did quite well. Although Stoke, you know, to me, looked uh, the better side of the two. There was a lot of talking point, uh, really, over that uh, goal that Stoke City scored from the free kick, and a lot of people condemned Jimmy Rimmer for it. Uh, but I think when we look at it again now, we can see that Jimmy, in fact, was pretty much unsighted. And he said as much afterwards to me. Here's uh, Alan Hudson just laying it off. Do you think he was unsighted here? Well, Al Hudson took the free kick, and it was a terrible free kick. And Salmon's had to run about four or five yards to the uh, left. And, you know, as I said, Jimmy, Jimmy's obviously can't see the ball. He's moved to the right and then to the left. So by that time, the ball was in the back of the net. You say a terrible free kick because uh, it was too far to Salmon's left? Yeah, I was talking to uh, Hudson as he came out at half-time and he, he jokingly said that he wanted to make the ball bounce twice before he hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Not easy to make the ball bounce at all on that uh, pitch no, yesterday. I think he was joking there. Yeah. yeah, you left just before the end uh, because you wanted to avoid all the traffic getting away from high, but you didn't see the Eddie Kelly equaliser, uh, which must have come as a bit of a surprise for you because I wonder when Arsenal were ever going to equalise. Yeah, I was a bit surprised. I had the radio on and the uh, game was on the radio and... When I heard the equaliser, you know, I was quite pleased for him. Well, this is how it happened, uh, Charlie. A bit like a pinball in there at the moment. Stoke had two or three chances to get it away. Alan Bloor heads it away. Peter Storey gets a little mixed up here. But a lot of Stoke defenders around there, and even as Dodd gets it away, Skeels, out of the picture, gets in uh, the way again, and it falls to Eddie Kelly. Still four defenders around him. Short and unsighted as well. Yeah, I think so. If you look at it, it looks like Skills is uh, edited across the goal for Eddie Kelly to put in. I don't, Absolutely you know, right. I don't know where he took a bribe or what. <laughs> no chance of that. Let's talk about you though, because uh, you were watching there again yesterday. As I say, a miserable season. What is the present situation now? I'm sure Arsenal fans are wanting to know. Well, the situation is, I'm training, I'm running, and uh, as soon as I can kick a ball again, you know, I'll start playing. Sooner the better, you know, because if I if I'm playing, people and I'm still alive, and then. Uh, 
I want to get away, so the situation hasn't changed there. Well, let's talk about the getting away in a moment. But you can't kick a ball while you're still not fully fit, in other words. Well, I, I can, I'm running. I'm running as, uh, as well as I should be. But um, kicking a ball, the impact, I, you know, the pain I get is, you know, it's, I just can't kick the ball. So if I'm not kicking the ball, it's no good to be running about out there. And all the time you're not playing, obviously, although you're still on the transfer list, nobody's going to buy you, are they? No, well, no one will buy me now, I shouldn't think, you know, until the end of the season or probably next season when I'm fit. You're still on the transfer list? Yeah. And you're yeah. still determined to get away from Arsenal? You don't see any future at Highbury for you? No, I definitely want to leave the club, you know. Me and Bert know the situation, and uh, if, they, if they don't want to let me go, I can't go, but I want to get away from the club and start afresh somewhere else in this... Uh, I hope I can uh, do a good job with somebody. Why has it gone south for you there, basically, Charlie? Well, uh, it's an hard question to answer, really. I think this has been, at, been building up for a couple of years now. You know, I've been in and out of the side. People say I only play a few games, you know, I, which is, I have no argument with. Might be a bit down to myself, but I think the, the manager could have been a bit more lenient with me. He's, he's told me I'm not playing in the side when I was fit, it's because I was on the transfer list. But um, as I said to him, I think the best way to sell a product is, you know, show mm. it. So, but he didn't agree with me. When you say it's a bit down to yourself, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm probably my own worst enemy. Over the years, I, I, I think I've got out of it. You know, people have said I'm lazy and I don't work hard and that. But I think that might have been true, say, maybe two years ago, which I've overcome that now. And I don't think they can uh, have any complaints with me. You see, Bobby Campbell on this programme said that he, he thought you were maybe the most gifted player that Arsenal had got and could be one of the most gifted players in the country, but your attitude wasn't quite right. Well, Have you really worked hard at your getting the right attitude this yeah, season? Yeah, I, I think so. I don't, I don't really understand what he means by the right attitude. I mean, he's never had any... Uh... I think probably he meant he couldn't bank on you, say, for 42 games in a season. Well, if, it, if, that, if that's a question what he, you know, he, he, put you, he said to you, I'll... I've got no arguments because I haven't played 42 games a season. I normally play 20. I'm good for 20 games, so if anybody wants to buy someone for 20, I'll be all right. Mm. <laughs> Mind you, a lot of people were referring to you as uh, the possibility of you becoming a Tottenham player a little earlier in the season, and I think the money was a bit difficult. Uh, is that a move that would satisfy you? Well, any move that would satisfy me, as long as I'm playing in the first division. If, if it's a case where, you know, a team don't want to buy me in the first division and the second division team come in, I'll have to go because... Uh, the only the way I want to play is in a first team, not in the reserves. Mm. It's no good for me. But, uh, you know, you, you've got so much talent and yet the seasons are going by and you really are not to playing to your full potential. Does that aspect of it worry you? Well, it must, must worry me to an extent because uh, I suppose I'm getting paid under false pretenses, really. Some people would think that, you know. Do you think that? No, I don't think that. You know, I think I'm worth a lot more than what I do earn, but, which is natural. Everybody wants to earn more money. But uh, I think if uh, I can get over injuries, I think I've had enough to last me the rest of my career now. If I can get over that and start playing, playing regular, then, then you know, I see no reason why I shouldn't be playing for England. Charlie George, I'd like to see you playing for Arsenal, first of all, or certainly uh, playing somewhere, because I think you've got too much talent to be sitting there watching week after week. And thank you very much indeed for coming in today you, Brian. and talking so frankly to us about it. Lovely. Let's have some more action now. An Ipswich Town go soldiering on after their marathon cup battle against Leeds. Uh, yesterday they were at home to relegation worried Leicester City and Anglia had their cameras at the game. The commentators Jerry Harrison, Ipswich here in the dark shirts. Back to Birchinall, well on his left. There goes Rofe on a run and a good ball to him. Tomley going over the cover. Lee over the far side calling for it. There's Lee. And a save. Lee again. Oh, off the post. Good gracious me. that last one but there was Lee's shot they hit the post an incredible escape for Ipswich Garland coming to him and Worthington here's Worthington Whitworth walks behind but this is Worthington now and it's a free kick No easy task for John Walk at the back there. He's mostly marking Bob Lee. But on this occasion, he's going to pick up the England player, Worthington. He's got Worthington there. And Blockley's come up, too, with Weimark marking him. In goes Walk. Oh, that's a 
that's there. And that's a fine goal from Worthington. Laurie Civil wants to know where that came from. Well, perhaps we can see it again and tell him. It looked as if this long free kick was going out of play, and perhaps one or two of the less experienced Ipswich players should have put it out of play, but to Wellington coming in fast behind, and particularly on his left foot, bingo! Hunter stays up there, Roger Osborne on the near post, Hamilton's there too. Hamilton coming towards the near post, up goes Austin. It breaks for Viljohn. Weimark gets up there, beaten well by Blockley. Woods. Hamilton can't turn. Samuels. Samuels driving his way through there, but good play again by Osborne. He's really been a power. Hunter. to chip one up beyond the far post and Woods knocked it in. And that's Hunter's quick reaction. Weimark couldn't quite get there. And Blockley firing it away. To a man who's played for England, he's certainly a little bit erratic at the back. That black look was aimed at Mr. Biddy. This is Woods jinking about. And a good bit of space here for Osborne. from the throw-in, found Osborne, fired one forward, and eventually it comes to Colin Piljohn, 2-1, and it's really an incredible story that Ipswich are putting up here. And Ipswich won 2-1, but now it's time for your letters, and first on a subject that I suppose was worth a mailbag full in its own right this week, that last gasp penalty for Burnley against Arsenal last Saturday that won them a point. But did a Burnley player encroach inside the penalty area before the kick was taken? Uh, Christopher and Robert Staples, two young viewers from 34 Woodfield Park, Amersham in Buckinghamshire. Mick Webb from Horsham in Sussex. And Malcolm Mercado of Quince College, The Oaks, Hawley near Camberley in Surrey were among a whole lot of viewers who thought that one did. It's a subject we've raised before. Let's look again. As uh, Leighton James takes that penalty, look, there are two players. One from Arsenal and one from Burnley both inside that penalty area. I think the fact that Pat Rice of Arsenal is there, you must disregard that. The real point is that the number five, Colin Waldron, is right inside that penalty area, and really, uh, strictly going by the laws of the game, that penalty should have been retaken. And indeed, if you watch closely, you'll see that subject is raised again before this programme is over. Now we come to Mrs N.J. Matthews of 65 Arundel Court, Lansdowne Road, Tottenham, N17 who tells me that her husband has been a Spurs supporter for 50 years and her son has been one for 20 years. That they'd like something to cheer them up, although I'm quite sure that Spurs' last two wins will have done that a little bit. But they reckon that Jimmy Greaves is the greatest Spurs player they've seen. So we've looked out one or two goals, as well as Jimmy's philosophy on the game as a whole. You know, if one really wanted uh, people to talk about you in 20 years, um, I would like them to say that he scored more goals than anybody else. Kinnear back to Pierce again. Lord Hawkins! Oh, what a goal by Greaves! Bobby Moore to pump it back again. Hurst looking to get underneath it. And does so. Greaves! Oh, Greaves! He's done it! Jimmy Greaves! Floating in as Hurst goes in, but in fact it was Jefferson who got it away. Oh, against the ball! Greaves! There it is! 
it off. Hurst trying to rise it above everybody else again and gets Best who toe ends it now for Ares. Turn back again. Now can Hurst get up? Down he goes. Greaves, Sonny putting it in. Jimmy Greaves gets the credit. Well, more letters for you next week. But now it's time for the big match playback. Once again, we've dusted off the action from one of the great games of the past for your enjoyment again on the programme today. Well, a lot of requests for a big Arsenal victory that they had in the First Division over Crystal Palace uh, at Selhurst Park in 1969. Requests from John Groger, who's aged 14, from 58 Buckland Court, Hackney, uh, from V. Dyer of 47 Belgrade Road, Stoke Newington in London, and Mr. G. French of South Ockenden. They were among those who wanted to see those goals again, so here we go. Arsenal here in the yellow shirts. Robertson trying his luck on the far side, finding Graham. Radford trying to give Hind the slip. And he may well have done so. Robertson, Mr. Charles Armstrong! George Armstrong, number one. Five minutes before half time. Calculations, the first goal of the season for George Armstrong. And there's the scoreline with five minutes to go to half time. Arsenal ahead. And now Callis going in and they've equalized. Bartram has equalized. Callis who only won two at home in the first division this season against Sunderland and against Stoke. Obviously badly needing a win to lift their morale a little bit. In the same way that Arsenal are, surprisingly, finding themselves at 14th in the first division to Palace's 18th. Here's McNabb putting it across. Radford in! And there it is by Radford! And Samuel's finding Armstrong. Bradford trying a little flick off onto Armstrong's left foot and a ricochet off McCormick. Armstrong with the corner for Arsenal. And Radford again getting in, flick in, a goal! Off Radford! Radford going in again. And again. And now George Graham. A little one, two, a chance for Graham. Oh, a magnificent goal by Graham. What a superb goal by Graham. George Graham. And Armstrong gone sprinting in. Beautiful play by Arsenal. Oh, and a magnificent goal by Radford. Oh, a tremendous goal. What a magnificent ball there by Graham to get Armstrong away, and that brave, brave diving header by Radford. Well, a few memories there. Do you remember it, Charlie George? Yeah, I think I was sub again that day, <laughs> but I was cheering the boys on. Some great goals there, though. Yeah, definitely. Yes, indeed. Right, we've got another big match playback next week for you, but now we come to our final game today, and it's the upheaval at the uh, First Division. Uh, where bottom club Carlisle yesterday played host to the league leaders Everton. Remember, Carlisle had already gone to Goodison Park and won this season. Now it's the return game at Brunton Park. Granada's cameras were there, the commentators, Gerald, since that Carlisle are in the dark shirts. Frank Clark coming out to make room on the right for Balderston. Gets the crossover, Davis hasn't made it. Tackle by train that upset Jones, but play goes on. Referee saw it and has just checked to make sure that nothing flared up off the ball. 
Osbaldiston. That's for Martin. And three men for him to cross to if he can beat Scott. Yes, he can, and down he goes. From the way Martin got up and raised his arms, suspicion might be aroused in cynical minds that there was an element of a dive in that. But that sort certainly didn't cross the mind of Mr. Willis. And here is an upset in the making. Joe Laidlaw, Everton's leading scorer with 11... Uh, Carlisle's leading scorer with 11 goals to take the penalty against Guy Davis. And in it goes! Now, it isn't going to count because the referee's going to have it taken again. The Everton players, I think, complaining that the ball wasn't on the spot. I think that's what it was about. We can have a look again. Yes, you can clearly see there, it's about a foot off, off the spot, and you can see Clements trying to attract the referee's attention. Ball certainly wasn't on the spot, so Joe Laidlaw's going to have to take it again. And he's taken about as much advantage as he dares this time. Well, it certainly looks well forward there. But Laidlaw again. Same place. Pick that one out, he says. Jubilation for the Carlisle fans. by car Clark still in play this is O'Neill Clark beautiful ball for train pullback is good good save but Carlisle were humming then Ballerston car is on a run down the right there's the pass for him and it's a good one good cross Put out by Kenyon. Another one now really would do it. And there it is now! Clark's header turned over by Davis from point blank range. Fine reaction save from a very good header from an equally well taken corner. Here it comes again. Balderston's left foot curling over the defenders. Clark gets up well. And doesn't Davis say well? Play on, says the referee, and Laidlaw brings the ball away. Three against three, and Carr coming up to make a fourth, and O'Neill a fifth. Here's Martin. Defence stretched for once, but there are men back now. Was that handball? Yes, it was. Steve Sargent was the offender. the ball with great precision for the free kick Martin what a beautiful goal what a superb goal very obviously rehearsed and carried out to perfection that really needs no words Laidlaw, Martin. Laidlaw again. It's a good ball. Trains back header. Clark must be offside. No, it's given. It's given. Well, that really has crowned the day. Let's just have a look again, make sure it was onside. There's the back header, and Clark not in the picture, so not really possible to tell. But 3-0, and no arguing against that scoreline. Yes, a brilliant victory for Carlisle, and I did say early on in the programme there was another example of encroachment when a penalty is being taken. 
And whether or not the ball was on the spot or not, Dave Clement there in the yellow shirt pointing to the fact that that Carlisle player is inside the D, which for the purposes of taking a penalty is a part of the penalty area. And that is why the penalty had to be retaken. That's it. Don't forget our special Cup Tie edition next weekend. On the Ball looks at the semi-finals and previews the Leeds-Barcelona game when we talk to Johan Cruyff and to two Dutch World Cup stars who both say that Leeds will win. Full coverage, of course, of one Cup semi-final next Sunday afternoon. But we leave you with scenes from a Cup final today and one that our guest, I'm sure, Charlie George, will never forget. His winning goal at Wembley in 1971. And I, for one, hope that soon we'll see Charlie on the field again instead of sitting in the stands. Graham. Bradford, Charlie George. Bradford. Oh, Charlie George, who can hit him? Oh, a free goal!